Hello, all you big, beautiful brains. Today, we're going to talk about structuralism. So, structuralism was developed by a guy named Wilhelm Wundt. Funny name, I know. But Wundt was really important because he set up the very first laboratory to scientifically study psychology. And it was important for Wundt to be able to control any outside sensory information that could affect his study because what he really wanted to demonstrate was how people processed sensory information. In particular, he wanted to define our conscious experience of sensory information. Big dreams, I know. So he wanted to separate sensation from perception. And that sounds a little fuzzy. So let me give an example. Uh, right now, when you're watching this video, you're getting a ton of sensory information. So your foot is moving, your hand is holding weight, there's an annoying sound, right? That's different than your perception or your conscious experience. You sense your foot moving, you perceive that you're tapping your foot on the ground. You sense a weight in your hand. You perceive, oh, I'm holding my phone. You sense there's an annoying sound, but you perceive that that's just my super annoying voice talking to you. Now, structuralism was designed to help you understand your own thoughts, feelings, and behavior better and understand the thoughts, feelings, and behavior of others more fully. What Wilhelm Wundt wanted to do was to be able to describe someone's conscious experience by breaking it down into the tiniest parts so that you could reassemble them into an experience that could be objectively observed by anyone. We call this idea reductionism because you can reduce things down to their smallest relatable, describable experience. Think about it like a periodic table of the elements, but for experiences. So the same way that you could take a hydrogen molecule, another hydrogen molecule, and a molecule of oxygen and combine them to get water, you could take foot tapping, holding your phone, and hearing my voice, and recreate the experience of watching this video for someone else. Basically, the same way that when you combine certain elements and reliably get the same chemical compounds, you can combine perceptions to recreate experiences. And I know this all sounds incredibly amazing. Once in his collaborator, a guy by the name of Edward Titchener, called this idea structuralism because it was based on the structure of your experiences. And what structuralism would allow us to do is mind-boggling. Basically, you can identify exactly what someone else is thinking, exactly what someone else is feeling, and then you can feel that exact same thing yourself. Imagine the kind of empathy that this could create, not just understanding what someone else is thinking and feeling, but being able to think and feel those same identical things. But structuralism has some really big problems. In fact, there's three of them. The first one is that it relied on a data collection method called introspection. And introspection is when a researcher asks you how you feel and you just give them an answer. Sounds simple, but it breaks down pretty quick. For instance, every time you're asked your feelings, do you always give an honest answer? The second reason that structuralism hmm, has some problems 
is that humans are rarely, if ever, objective. Unfortunately, we all have our own biases, even if we aren't consciously aware of them. It can be incredibly difficult when somebody asks you a question about a topic that you feel passionately about, and then you have to give a really objective, deliberative answer. The third big problem with structuralism is that we all seem to have different experiences. No two people are born at the exact same time and have the exact same experiences. Even identical twins born minutes apart have genetic differences, different attitudes and personalities, and even just different preferences like favorite foods. We're all subjected to different life experiences, and a large part of how we perceive the world is based on the prior experiences that we've had in the world. But I don't want to underplay the value of structuralism. Structuralism was a major step in helping scientists understand how human experience plays a big part in how we observe the world around us. But as new theories of how the brain works were developed, structuralism really fell out of favor. So, if you want to see some of the theories that are still in use today, make sure to click on the videos in the description below, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! Let's do more jokes about how annoying my voice is. <laughs> That's my favorite part. <laughs>